Okay. All right. Good, good. We're live. Hello, everybody. How are you today? Welcome to um, some Latin pep talks, a different kind of March madness. I'm here with Dr. Matt Ruininger. And uh, my name is Amy Brooks. And we are so excited to talk to you today about journaling in general and prayer mm -hmm. journaling and the benefits. Mm -hmm. But um, before we start, we're going to pray. And um, together, I guess we'll just pray Hail Mary and ask for the Holy Spirit to guide this whole conversation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So to everyone who's with us now, and hopefully um, they'll be encouraged when you do it, please comment. Let us know your name because of the software we're using. We'll just say Facebook user. Uh, comment your name. Tell us where you're watching from and any questions that come up during Dr. B's like 15 minute talk, please feel free to write them. So, and the more people that comment, the more people will know that we're live and that will help um, more people join the conversation. So thank you again for being here, Dr. Bruninger, Dr. B, as I've noticed you call yourself <laughs> a dream to battle. Um, please introduce yourself and, sure. and educate us on journaling. Sure. <laughs> my, name is, um, my name is Matt Bruninger. Um, I'm a, an associate professor of psychology at Franciscan University in Steubenville, Ohio. Um, I'm also the um, founder and clinical director of Wellspring Counseling, Coaching and Consulting which is sort of a, a Catholic um, therapy practice rooted here in Ohio, but we do telehealth and um, consulting all over. Um, and I'm the author of a new book, uh, Finding Freedom in Christ, Healing Life's Hurts, a book about emotional wounds and how we can heal. Um, so awesome. a little bit about me. I did, my, um, ma I did a master's degree in theology at Ave Maria University down in Naples, Florida. And I did my um, graduate work in um, clinical psychology at Baylor University in Waco, Texas. And so I'm- So are you a psychologist or a psychiatrist? I'm a psychologist. Yep. Psychologist. So I, I don't prescribe. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not a medical doctor. I can't okay. prescribe. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I'm happy to be here, excited to be here. Yes, oh, I'm so happy you're here too. So. Yeah. Uh, those are just joining us. You didn't miss really anything except Dr. Um, B introduced himself, but we really need you to comment because that will let mo more people know that we are live and, and talking. And uh, any questions that you have ahead of time or while Dr. B is talking, uh, please, please put them in the comments. And again, it'll say Facebook user. So please, you know, give us your name so we can say, hey. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I won't interrupt again for no, that's five perfect. minutes. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, so a little bit, I guess, about um, journaling. So it's sort of fascinating because there, there is, um, there's a fair amount of literature out there on the benefits of journaling. And there have been a number of studies done on um, maybe even pulling back a step further, just writing by hand. So, you know, in the past, I don't know, 10 years or 15 years, especially in colleges, on college campuses, the trend has been uh, sort of moving toward taking notes on laptops. And so there have been a couple uh, pretty large studies and sort of I think, um, sound studies that have shown that taking notes by hand is actually better for memory than taking notes on a laptop. Now, a lot of people feel like they can type faster than they can write, so it feels more efficient to get all of the information you're trying to get. But when it comes to actually consolidating learning, when it comes to actually laying down the kind of neural pathways um, like associated with learning and memory of a particular thing, writing is incredibly powerful and, and taking notes on a computer um, just doesn't have the same um, sort of neural benefits um, or impact that writing by hand does. And so, you know, at the 20,000 foot view, anytime we're writing something by hand, we are activating regions of the brain that seem to be associated with um, sort of uh, deeper learning 
and processing of the information that we're writing. Um, so, so that seems important to begin with, that, that the act of writing versus typing or just speaking, but the act of writing seems to help us um, learn information better, memorize information. So um, one sort of broad benefit there. But then when, when we think about actually sort of journaling itself, why might journaling be so effective? Like what, what's the mechanism? So study after study after study that has journaling involved, and there's all sorts of different journaling techniques, right? Gratitude journaling, prayer journaling. But what might the mechanism be that makes journaling effective? And I think there's a couple things I wanna highlight. So the first is, um, and they've done studies on uh, patients who have anxiety and depression and journaling tends to reduce their anxiety and depression. Well, why? The proposed mechanism here is that um, journaling gets sort of these intrusive thoughts, these unhelpful thoughts that are constantly bombarding you. It gets them sort of out of your head and onto paper and folks will report experiencing less intrusive thoughts. That there's something about when I'm trying to think something through in my head, when I'm trying to hold it in my head and, and work through it, my mind sort of always wants to come back to it and keep chewing on it, keep figuring it out. Um, we call this, um, in, in psychology, this is working memory. So working memory is the type of memory that you hold something in your mind, you manipulate it, change it, fix it, address it, and then you spit back out a new product. So if I said to you right now, Amy, what's three plus three? You would remember the question, three plus three. You would do the math in your mind and you'd spit out a project. That's working memory. Well, we can, we can access or utilize our working memory for like life problems, um, our marriage, how to help the kids get better grades. Um, how am I gonna figure out this evening how to cook dinner, how to get all the kids in bed, how to spend time with my wife, and that, right? Right now, that's in my mind. I'm working on it. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm planning. I'm... My working memory is working very hard. But what's interesting is if we don't feel like we can solve the problem or if we don't solve the problem, oftentimes we can kind of want to come back and keep working on it throughout the day. And that can feel distracting. It can feel stressful. It can feel exhausting. When we write something down in a journal, by by sort of externally processing it and writing it down it gives us um, the sense that i don't have to be working on this problem 24 7. it's there it will be there i can come back to it when i need to um, and so in that sense it reduces the sort of maybe constant bombardment of thoughts and problems and stressors that our mind is saying you need to pay attention to this. This is worrisome. You need to figure this out. Let's go. We, we put it on paper out, outside of our head and that sort of signals, it's okay, it's there. It's not going anywhere. I can re return to it um, when the time is right. And so, so by the way, this is a great way to, if you have a hard time falling asleep because you're anxious, um, sometimes I'll have a list of things running through my head before I go to bed. If you write that list down, things to stress about tomorrow when I wake up, right? If I write that list down and get it out of my head, I can fall asleep like a baby. Wow. Because my mind knows you don't have to try to remember it. You don't have to try to hold on to it right now and solve it. It will be there tomorrow. And so um, journaling does has a mechanism similar to this. It, it allows us um, to sort of reduce the constant bombardment of thoughts that are fighting for our attention because we've externalized them. I'll tell you that um, in a lot of the programs I run, I right now we're running a, a 12 week program called, actually I'll show you that, speaking of journaling, this is amazing. I hadn't even put this together till just now, but um, <laughs> I developed this program called Known, Embraced by the Heart of the Father. And it's a 12 week program, um, there's the cover there. And what we try to do is we try to help people, and if you see the side, no, uh, embraced by the heart of the father, by the heart of the father. And you'll see here, we, we actually call it the known prayer journal. Oh. Um, 
And what we do is throughout the, and we have lots of space. I mean, I'm just a couple paid, but we have, there's a guided meditation and then space for reflecting. We have questions in there. We've got, you know, but one of the benefits of, of this program that I found is the purpose of it is to help people deepen their, their sense of being beloved by the father, their, their sense of, of being beloved sons and daughters. That's the, that's the goal of the program. But before we begin every session, and it's a group model, and so we have about 20 people on the call, we begin with what we call a mind dump, which is essentially we ask you to write down all of the things that are fighting for your attention right now. All of the things that are gonna say, hey, don't pay attention to this. You've gotta do this, 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 and this. And that simple act of doing a mind dump, writing down on paper the things you're stressed and worried about, kind of does what I was just saying, it externalizes it, it tells your brain, we don't have to worry about this right now, you can relax, it's there, we can pick it up whenever we want. Okay, so I'm beating that horse dead, but that's one no, of the no, benefits. No, it's, it's good, and then I, I wanna encourage people not to be shy, because there are people with us, but no one's okay. really saying hi. Say yeah. hi, introduce yourself, it'll Please. it'll help. Um, there are people possibly who would also wanna join us, and Facebook will, will um, tell them yeah but i see that you're here so say hello and say hi and ask a question if you'd like yeah 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 um better than me just rambling so please ask a question oh no you're doing great though this um is, this is how so about that? that i mean that's certainly one mechanism here's the other one and i i think this is probably the most important and um there's a general principle um in psychology and and i think there's i think we even find this in theology. But the general principle in psychology is um, when anxiety, sorry, when negative thoughts, experiences, or feelings are avoided, anxiety and suffering increases, right? Oh, thank, that's appreciate. <laughs> appreciate you, Brenda. <laughs> Tell my kids that. <laughs> uh, uh, when, when, when we avoid difficult things, we get what, what's oftentimes a short-term benefit, but sort of a long-term difficulty. The short-term benefit of avoiding negative thoughts, feelings, memories, et cetera, um, difficult conversations, difficult relationships. When I avoid those, initially my anxiety decreases and that feels really good. The problem with avoidance is avoidance increases anxiety. Um, I'm gonna give you a really silly example it's 100% true and it illustrates the point. I'm afraid of sharks. I've always been terrified of sharks. Um, like, um, and I, I don't mean like, I mean like I'm, act, I'm afraid of sharks. So growing up when I would swim in pools, I'd be terrified that I was gonna be attacked by a shark. Um, lakes, it's just, it's pathological. So uh, last year, two years ago, we're in Florida visiting my parents. And my son says, Dad, let's swim out to that buoy out there. Like, Absolutely not, son. <laughs> right? And he, he's like, why not? No, I, I'm, I'm, I have enough knowledge to know that I don't want to make him terrified of something that is irrational in me. Um, so I said, ah, you know, I'm just not feeling up for it. Oh, come on. No, not today, buddy. Sorry. Here's why I don't want to swim out there. Because I'm terrified of being attacked by a shark. Now, the second I said, no, I'm not going out there with you, my anxiety decreased. I'm safe. I'm safe. But what happens is this. My mind goes, man, thank God you didn't go out there because you would have been attacked. You just saved yourself from something awful. And that very thought, man, you just saved yourself from something awful, actually increases my anxiety. The avoidance of it makes my anxiety worse. Yeah, I really did just save myself. Man, I, it would have been awful if I went out there. <clears throat> so this is sort of a basic principle of psychology. We tend to build our lives around avoidance. And avoidance doesn't always look bad. Avoidance doesn't always look like we're huddled in a corner, right? Afraid. Um, Sometimes people walk in a room, sometimes the person who's sort of the most chatty and talkative and charismatic, they're avoiding the feeling of uh, uh, silence. They might not like silence. Silence might make them uncomfortable. 
What happens if other people start asking them questions that they don't know the answer to? Their talking can be a form of avoidance. Uh, sometimes when people are really, really shy and pull back, that can be avoidance. Um, sometimes when we work, right, overworking can be avoidance. My point is this, um, and, and Scott Hahn said this the other day, we were chatting and he said, I think part of what Jesus tries to teach us is how to not be so afraid of suffering, how to not avoid suffering. So much of our life can be thought of as sort of the avoidance of suffering in big ways and little ways. Wow. Um, sometimes the way I parent is to avoid suffering, okay. you know, um, <laughs> to avoid. Yep. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so why is journaling important? Well, <clears throat> one thing I think it does is that prayer journaling, um, and in particular, like, especially if there's some prompts, but what it does is it invites us to approach difficult and painful topics. It invites us to approach difficult and painful topics. It invites us to reduce our avoidance. And, and the beauty of journaling is that <clears throat> what is sometimes very difficult to say to another human being, um, I feel afraid that I'm not a good can enough I, Can you repeat that? Prayer journaling invites us to... Yeah, to, to, approach to approach topics that we may have been avoiding. Okay. Right? Why? Because there's a certain built-in safety. And, and the safety is this. Like, <clears throat> if you said to me, Matt, what are you, what are you really afraid of right now? Matt, what are you really struggling with right now? Well, gosh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I want to tell you that because I, I don't know if you can handle it. I don't know if you're safe. I don't know if that information is going to get um, used in ways that hurt or harm me. <clears throat> and so I might sort of avoid answering that question. But, but the beauty of prayer journaling is, um, especially if it's sort of prayer journaling, one, hopefully I'm um, creating a space where I'm saying, I'm inviting God in to start. God, please be present in this time. I invite you into this time. Um, allow me to experience the safety and comfort of your fatherly love as I think and explore. And, right? Okay. So it's done in hopefully the context of a, of a safe relationship, but also this information is is not getting out. It's not going anywhere. And so it oftentimes gives me the courage to approach difficult and painful topics that I would have otherwise avoided. Um, yeah. And I tell people, because this is my own trick. Yeah. Because sometimes when you write in a prayer journal, you're afraid, what if somebody picks this up and reads it? I know. So I, know. I have a trick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, and I share it. So you can either color a picture and glue it on top of the private part the private thing that you wrote or even a holy card or a Catholic sticker, mm -hmm. put it over, you know, yes. especially like if you're praying a novena, sometimes I'll, I'll write out the novena and write out the intention. Um, but yeah, whatever you write that you don't want people to read, you can cover it up and you say, God knows what's here. Yes. It's, it's between God and I, I, yes. I got it out. Yes. I wrote him the letter. He read it. Yep. So I'm going to glue this over. It's so beautiful. Else. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, I, you know, and to another thing I would say about prayer journaling is um, to allow it to be genuine, a genuine expression. So, you know, my, my background, my undergraduate was in um, English literature. And um, sometimes when I, I found when I've done journaling in the past, I sometimes I imagine, okay, so when they find this in 60 years and, um, you know, my cause for canonization is coming up. You know, I want, and so I end up writing this like flowery sort of, and it's just, it's totally disingenuous. It's mm -hmm. not real. It's not authentic. It's not, um, we make progress through journaling to the extent that we are open and willing to be honest and real and genuine. So, so this isn't story of a soul for me. You know what I mean? This isn't like... <laughs> I don't need to write it like this is going to be the spiritual wisdom that people are reading in 50 years because right. it's not. I need to write it like a genuine reflection on um, the movements of my heart, of my emotions, etc. Um, but I think journaling really gives us a space 
to approach very difficult and painful material. So it, re it reduces our avoidance. Um, or I say it can, it can. When we wouldn't otherwise feel safe to share something, sometimes we feel safe to write it down. And by writing it down over time, again, it, it can reduce our anxiety, our distress, our overwhelmedness, because we're now actually allowing ourselves to consider or think about or chew on things that we otherwise wouldn't. We're approaching instead of avoiding. Um, and on top of it, we're doing that in a written format, right? We're, we're writing it out, which is activating all those nice neural pathways. Um, and so in, in my mind, I think that's it's a huge benefit to prayer journaling is cracking open those places and spaces in our heart that we don't give ourselves permission to go to very often. And that's scary. I do. I do think. It, I do think it can be very scary and um, vulnerable. It's worth acknowledging. Uh, last thing. Last point I want to make is that, in the form of journaling, what you're left with is a sequence or series over time of these reflections, of these prayers that you've written, which are expressions of your heart. These sort of mental and, and spiritual exercises of thinking about and chewing on certain things. Okay, you have this record of it, right? And the beauty of that record is you can see over time. Sometimes we're not the best, um, uh, we're not the be most accurate reporters of our own experience. Um, I've, <laughs> I've been on vacations that were miserable. And then six months later, if you ask me how it was, I'm like, oh man, it was awesome. <laughs> and my wife's like, was it? Like that was awful, right? Wasn't it awful? Don't you remember? You like you said it was awful and it was the worst. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I did, right? Um, we're not always the most accurate reporters, and so to actually have a written narrative mm -hmm. allows us to see our growth and our progress. It allows us to see sometimes how God is moving in and through our journaling, because we can see changes that maybe we we couldn't see if we were just trying to hold it all in our memory. What was I thinking six months ago? I don't know what I was thinking six months ago. <laughs> Honest to God. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking last week. Like, yeah, you know, but if I have a written record, I can go back and look and see and say, oh my gosh, that's right. Six months ago, I was really concerned with, um, you know, not being attentive enough to my wife. And look now, now I actually feel like I'm in a really good place with that. And now my concerns have changed to being a more, um, you know, being a holier employee or sanctifying my work. Look at how my desires have changed over time. Look at how my thoughts and feelings about God have changed or about my vocation have changed. You can see it. You get to see growth. You also get to see areas of, of um, where growth might still be needed, but it's much clearer. When something is in black and white on paper, it's oftentimes easier to... Um, to sort of um, allow ourselves to to take as true. Like sometimes when I'm just thinking about things in my head, I'm not quite sure, uh, is that what actually was that? Is that, well, no, when it's been written down, that's how I felt six months ago. I sort of say, okay, that, that is how I felt six months ago. And this is how I feel now. And look at the discrepancy between the two. So I think it's another big benefit. We get to see the narrative of our life. Human beings are narrative creatures. Um, when I ask you, actually, this is interesting. If I ask you about your past, you tend to tell it to me like a story. Um, there's main characters, there's theme, there's conflict. Um, oftentimes you're the protagonist or you should be in your own life. Like you're the main character. Um, when people tell you sort of disconnected memories that don't seem to have an actor or like an action or a theme, that's actually in my mind, a red flag. It's problematic. We tend to think of our lives in a narrative, as a story. And journaling can allow that story to be clearer. And it, not only to be clearer, but by deliberately reflecting on certain aspects of our life, we can actually um, shape our narrative. We, we can be sort of co-creators in our own story. 
and, and say, what do I want to be working on? What do I want to be focusing on? Where do I want to go? And it gives us time and space to write out that narrative. Yeah. To see where we've been and to want to think about and where we're going. It also allows us to see God answering our prayers. Exactly. And sometimes in subtle ways, right? Ways that you wouldn't otherwise see if you were just sort of thinking about it. But when you write something out, you can, you can oftentimes see dimensions of it that you wouldn't see if you were just sort of thinking about it on the fly. And so um, I, I think that's really, you know, God's grace sometimes emerges from the page when we create that deliberate space to reflect on it and write it down. I think that some people might be asking questions, but because we're live in several different areas, it's not coming up here. Okay. So I might try and go check. Are you okay with that? Please go check. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to sip a coffee Let's here. See. Yeah. Right. If I lose you, can I check? Hmm. Let me try. Oh, here. Getting a call from Cocoa no. Beach, Florida. All right. I don't I don't see any questions. Brenda, thank okay. you so much for commenting. At least I know some. But I think she um, gave uh, streamer permission to use her name. So that's a little different. Awesome. Um, so, but what if you have you, questions, your questions. Me? Yeah. Well, you know this. I mean, you're sort of the resident expert in this stuff. Well, I mean, I the times that I prayer journal the most are the when my heart aches the most, I would yeah. say, or I long or, or, or I'm frustrated. I mean, I think my motivation was like, well, maybe God doesn't hear me if I write it down, you know, mm. this, was, this was 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so that's when I, I find the motivation probably more is when, when yeah. something's really, you know, um, when I'm really pleading with God about something. Can I ask about your your sort of process? Like, so when you prayer journal, um, what would that look like for you? Do you start with do you start with a do you start with a prompt or a prayer or something, or do you just sort of pour out the heart, like express well, it? Yeah, when I first started, I really just would write, "Dear Jesus," and what I noticed is right away I realized, you know, when you pray, you don't even say hi or thank you; you just go right into, "Dear God, help me, please." Yeah. you know, with this or that. So I thought this is really good because hi, somebody picks this up. I mean, maybe the first motivation was vanity, but how rude are you? <laughs> you know, like when you're talking to, to, to God or, or saying hello to him or writing someone a letter, what do you do? You, you say, hello, you ask how yeah. they're doing. But yes. with God, I, I, it, it came to the, my attention that I need to thank God for some things mm. before I go rambling can you please help mm. me? So it it um, made me more aware of how I prayed and how I didn't pray enough with gratitude or contrition or, you know, and, yeah. and brought that to my own attention. But yeah, my yeah. preference is just to write, sometimes I write, dear father in heaven or dear Jesus. Um, what I like about that. My, probably my preference. I love that. Um... There's two things at play always, and, and this is a good point to bring out too. So there's the content of what we're writing, but there's the process. So there's what we write, but there's sort of how we write it. And with journaling, you get to see both really clearly. And so what you're what you're bringing out there is, you know, the content, dear Jesus, whatever, whatever, whatever. whatever. But mm -hmm. you saw the process, which was, I don't even start with hi. Like when I call my best friend and I want to and I want to tell him about something. I always start with, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Right. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, hey, do you have a quick sec? And, but I, there's always a, an initial acknowledgement that you're a human being who has thoughts right. and feelings. You're re like, so you saw the process. So that's another beautiful thing about journaling is we do see the process of how we tend to engage. And that can show us areas where we want to grow, need to grow, are doing great. That's good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. another reason that motivated me was like, I would start praying a novena and by day three or four, I was changing my intention. And that's why, why I love novenas too. I feel like they help us um, really, you know, look at our desires and, and hear if that's really God's will 
and is it even our will? Mm -hmm. Like, I think because when I started prayer journaling, I was changing relationships and I knew I was hoping for the vocation of marriage. And, but there's certain people, if I started saying, please let us get married, it would never get past day three because it was meant yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I would get frustrated. I'm like, well, okay, if you really want something, write it down and just read it so you stay consistent because you keep changing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right in the arena for one thing, it should be for one thing. And and I would write it down to stay consistent in my prayer and that prayer intention. Yes. So. Interesting. Again, I mean, interesting um, insight and knowledge about the process, not just the content of what you were praying about, but how. Like you, you learned about yourself within the spiritual life by journaling. Right. I yeah, tend to do that. Introspection, right? Like it yeah. really. Oops, what was that? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. But sometimes I just prayer journal because it's relaxing, and the kid, like my daughter's with me, or, and I just, it's an excuse. It, when I talk about prayer journaling, I say one of the benefits to me is the feeling of nostalgia I get. Like you talked about, I mean, nobody writes with a pen anymore. I have an old notebook that I would have used in school. Yeah. Um, I grant myself permission to color, you know, yes. in the journal yeah. and, and it allows me, and I'm terrible at relaxing. I'm constantly feel like I have to be doing something. So that, that yeah. allows, I give myself permission to do something enjoyable. That's great. Permission and space. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. There is so much for doing Go ahead. this. <laughs> no, yeah. just thank you so much Love. for doing this. You're busy. I don't know when your next class is. <laughs> oh, I love it. I have 10 minutes. So. Um, yeah, this, this, um, you, I haven't you know, seen any questions, but if you do have a question, like Brenda, if you have a question, clearly your commenting works. Um, yeah. or maybe if Brenda sees other questions, she can type them in, yeah. but if not, I can always contact Dr. B later with them and maybe it'll give you content for, I don't know how much you're looking for content for your YouTube channel, but if we get questions, you yeah. can do ask a Catholic. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I have a chance to ask a Catholic therapist, both on YouTube and Instagram. I'm kind of terrible at being consistent because my life is crazy, busy with kids and lots of stuff. But, um, but, but I like to your point, Amy, that um, the beauty of prayer journaling is it sets a rhythm too, um, and and it, it's not something you can rush. Um, it's not something you can. It, it like it invites a pace it invites space for you to think and introspect um and it oftentimes i think and i'd be curious what your experience is but it also for me i can't be creative unless i first have space mm -hmm. like the, if, if i'm in a go 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 mode creativity for me requires a certain amount of mm -hmm. um, leisure and so journaling for me is a place where I can sit, I can think, and I begin to actually dream. Yes. I begin to get creative. <laughs> and, and, and what's amazing is I, I find I'm opening up parts of my heart um, that feel so good to open up and to access that I never give my time, myself time to access. And, and just dreaming, what kind of life do I want for my wife and I? What kind of, what kind of life do I want for my family? You and that allows us to experience hope. Yes. Yes. Which is another thing when you're super, like, again, the first time I was journaling was, but I was battling depression. So to have that hope that yes. this dream of a better situation, a better life. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. But even um, if you're not depressed, it, you know, I just think of that. Is it St. Teresa of Avila that says, you pay God a compliment when you ask big things of him? Yeah. And maybe his plans are so grand and we are so narrow focused in our day to day that we can't hear him tell us about these bigger plans or I don't know. No, that's my, so. my daughter, three year old daughter. She turns four on Friday, actually. Um, so she stopped this recently, but for about six months, every morning I'd come downstairs and she would ask me for chocolate chips. First thing in the morning, seven in the morning, they dead, chocolate chips. And I'd be like, no, babe, we're not going to chocolate chips. <laughs> and, and she'd go, hmm, ice cream? 
And I'm like, babe, we're not, no. <laughs> we did this, I kid you not, Amy, for six months. And what's sort of beautiful about that and, and the model for me is she felt totally comfortable asking me like a big ask. Mm -hmm. You know, at the, whatever the equivalent is, you know, I imagine like, her asking me for chocolate chips at seven in the morning. So is like when me. did you break down and give them to her? <laughs> so, yeah, right. So probably every three weeks, every three weeks, I'd probably just like give her a little hit. Um, <laughs> and she, she's her father's daughter. She's an absolute junkie. Like, like I love sweets. Man. I just love sweets. And you're preaching to the choir, prayer, wine, chocolate. Yeah. And, blog, and I gave them chocolate for Lent and wine. <laughs> And yeah. I'm just I'm saying that publicly out loud now because it was I don't have confidence in myself. Yeah, because you're dying. Because it's embarrassing <laughs> how hard it is to give up ice cream for me. Like, yeah. Um, but she, <laughs> man, she asked. She asked, like the big ask. And part of what's beautiful about that is it shows her tremendous confidence in me as her father. Like mm -hmm. she feels totally comfortable asking me. And sometimes I'll say yes. Sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm but she feels like she can always ask. Mm -hmm. um, and so, man, yeah, I think journaling create, creates a, a rhythm and a space. And so, so we talked about before, um, in the very beginning I mentioned sort of consolidating learning. Like we go through all sorts of things all day long. There, there are opportunities to learn, there are opportunities to grow, there are opportunities to reflect in a way that can foster growth and, and development. But we miss out on those moments because we don't actually pause to take 10 or 15 minutes to reflect in a way that allows us to consolidate that learning. To say like, hey, I just had a really difficult meeting. I don't like the way I acted. Next time I'm in a situation like that, I would like to be more patient, less reactive, and I would like to lead with love or lead with humility. And, if I take 10 minutes and I write that down after a meeting, I'm, I'm, I'm much more likely to internalize that, to remember it, to learn it, and to reenact it. Than if I just sort of say, man, that meeting didn't go well. Oh, I'll do better next time. Right. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to default and be reactive next time. Mm -hmm. So taking time to journal even, I mean, this doesn't have to be um, hours of it either. Right. If you have a little journal and, and after little moments throughout the day, you take time to just five, 10 minutes reflect on what happened, you're much more likely to recognize important things, see where God was active, understand where you could have done better and give yourself space to dream, hope, reflect and grow and consolidate that. And at the end of each day, you can look back and say, oh yeah, that's right. that meeting today, that's right. Again, you've got this like, this And a great opportunity to do that is going to Eucharistic Adoration. Yeah. 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 Agreed. So much. Yeah. So Thank much. you again. I'm going yeah, you're to- welcome. Um, You're welcome. I'm gonna put it on our YouTube channel, Catholics Online's YouTube channel. And, um, and I'll look and see if anybody did comment. Yeah. And if you want to come back later and, and write questions, I can always send them to Dr. Bruninger. Please. And please, please. Uh, yeah, this is great. This is great. Thank you so much because I, I've always shared my own experience, but I, it was nice hearing from, you know, just the psychological benefits. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, and there's a lot, I mean, the study after study, it increases well being, it decreases into intrusive thoughts and, there's gratitude journal. This is a huge one now, right? Gratitude journaling. Turns out when you take time, it, we have a real strong negativity bias as humans. And so when you take time to intentionally write out three things that you're grateful for and why, we see increased sense of well being, reduced sense of anxiety, re reduced sense of depression. Like yeah. taking the and time it takes to take five do minutes. It. Dear five God, minutes. thank you for three things. Yes, five minutes. All right. Um, and there's real benefits, you know? Um, so. I encourage people and myself even. Yeah. I'm in same. a slump with it right now, you know, I but me too. <laughs> yes. So, but the, when I go to adoration more and I allow myself to just write in adoration, not necessarily journal, because yeah. I'm writing a lot of different things now, but yeah. And sometimes we're surprised by what comes out, right? 
yeah. things we didn't even know were laying dormant in our minds and hearts that we didn't give ourselves space to consider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It is. Uh, thank you again. I'm gonna. You're welcome. I'm gonna end the video, but we'll You're see welcome. each other. So again, if you have questions, it's okay to ask them on the replay, and definitely let us know if you watch the replay. Okay, everyone, have a wonderful day. Bye -bye. Peace, y'all. <laughs>